time to revisit our garden shed inventors dotted around the country. This week, Inventors Plus is in Bristol. Lindsay Fallow and David Waddell shake out a rather unusual range of high-tech innovations. This week, Inventions Plus is coming from one of the powerhouses of the Industrial Revolution. We're in Bristol to meet some of the local innovators and inventors, but before we do that, David Wardell has been checking out a bit about Bristol's past. Bristol is famous for its engineers, and we're talking serious stuff here. Behind me is the engine that powers the world's only supersonic passenger plane, Concorde. It was built in a local Bristol factory in the 1970s. Now, of course, to build something like Concord takes years of research and development, but anyone can come up with a bit of an idea and invent something. Now, this has got to be one of the most unusual inventions I've ever heard of. It's a bow for doing archery for blind people. And the inventor Jeff is with me. Now, Jeff, how does it work? There's uh, a laser mounted on a standard archery bow, and this uh, fires the beam at a sensor unit in line with the target. As the bow and the laser move, it triggers off different sensors which gives out sound signals through stereo headphones. And if the noise is in the left hand side, they need to move left. If it's in the right hand ear, they need to move right. Now for up and down, there's different pitches. The high pitch means the archer needs to go up, and the low pitch means the archer needs to aim further down. So the laser, which you can see here, is what helps it guide towards the target. That's right, yes. The laser actually shines at the um, sensor unit and as you move the bow, the laser moves to a different sensor and that will trigger off different sounds. Okay, well, shall we have a go? Certainly, yes. Okay, now what do I do? Okay, normally you would wear the stereo headphones, but for the demonstration Ooh. we have the speakers. It's making beeping noises. That's right, well you were hitting the target there. Now. So when it goes quiet, I'm pointing at the target. When it goes quiet, you're pointing at the target. Now you hear you have a, a mid-tone in the right-hand speaker, so that means you need to go towards the right. And as you scan right, a little further, that's it, and a bit more. Oh, I think you've gone off target a bit there. Okay, so right and up, and you've got it, you're on target that's there. It. I could never hold that still and fire an arrow. It is quite difficult, yes. Um, archers trained for many years to be able to uh, consistently hit the ball. That's why they haven't given me a sharp pointy arrow to fire, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's right, yes. Yeah. But you're now in the middle and you're on, on goal. Now's the time to shoot. So what's the next step for you? Is this taking off? There's a lot of interest amongst uh, blind archers, but also amongst sighted archers, because this system can be used to train sighted archers right from novices up to Olympic standards. So David, it obviously works and it was quite a lot of fun. What do you think? Well, it's an interesting idea. I have to um, confess when I heard about it, I thought it was the maddest thing in the world, an archery for blind and partially sighted people. It's always a problem when you try and develop new products, new ideas for the disabled market. By definition, you have a much smaller audience than you would normally have. So it can be very difficult to make these things commercially viable. Is that a common problem with all products that are aimed at minority groups? Yes, it is. I mean, if you, if you look at this one, for instance, there are less than 100 blind or partially sighted archers in the UK and a further 300 in France. So you're never going to get thousands of customers. But what is good about this is that it can actually be used by sighted archers to help them improve the way they stand and the way that they release the, uh, the flights. So therefore, it, it's got applications. So there, there, there is a bigger market. And this is quite sort of mind-catching as well. People will remember it. It's great for PR. I mean, the moment it's mentioned, everybody does a double take. So it, it's a good way of getting the doors open. And then you can start talking about the more sensible commercial aspects of similar technology. <laughs> We've just hopped across the river to the Explore at Bristol Science Centre. Joining me is Cliff Dowes and his invention, Mirror Music. Now, I've been told the only way to understand it is to have a demo. So go for it, Cliff. It's quite simple. You can take any piece of music 
and flip it the other way by so, using a process called mirror music. So instead of going up, things are going down? That's right, yes. And instead of going down, they're going up? That's right, everything's flipped the other way. You can take a fully arranged piece of music and uh, put it through a device which we call the Mirror Maker and it will flip the whole lot. And what's the purpose of that? Uh, to generate more music. Um, if you have writer's block then you can uh, mirror an idea or a riff or something like that and um, generate a new one. Get inspired. Oh yes. <laughs>